Hey folks, so happy to be here today. And uh, like Rob mentioned, I'm talking to you about podcast tours. And uh, uh, there's a bunch of scripts, some notes, some different documents I'm gonna be sharing in the talk. I just wanna let you know, you could download all of it at the end of the talk. I'll have the slides, I'll have a URL for you. Nothing you need to worry about there. Take some notes, but you don't need to take all of them. So when it comes to podcast tours, there's three things we wanna think about at a high level. The first thing is with a podcast tour, we wanna understand who our best buyers are. If we're going out to talk to people, we wanna understand, well, who exactly are we trying to talk to? Second, we want to uh, uh, think about the increase of podcast listeners over the last few years and what this means in terms of marketing strategy, what this means in terms of building and developing our audience. And third, we wanna think a little bit about the power of influencer recommendations. What does that mean for our business? What does it mean when an influencer talks about our product, our service, our company, and endorses it for us? So, Jumping into it, well, first, let's ask a question. What exactly is a best buyer? It's a phrase that we might hear in marketing copy or in different uh, uh, sources, but I think Jay Abraham defines it best in the strategy of preeminence. He, call, he says this, best buyers are buyers who buy more, more often, and at a higher price. And it makes sense. We want to focus on these people because, well, they're the best buyers. They're the people who will buy what we have to sell at a higher price. Chet Holmes in Ultimate Sales Machine also says, there are fewer best buyers than there are all buyers. And that means it's even cheaper to focus on them than on all buyers. When we put these two concepts together, we get a nifty little chart I made in Keynote that looks like this. We can see, if we think about it, for whatever our market is, whatever target audience we're trying to reach, we have the set of all buyers. We have, we have a smaller set of best buyers. And if we're able to optimize to reach just those best buyers, just our exact target market, it's going to make our marketing that much easier. So switching topics for a second, let's talk about the growth of podcasting and what that means. There's a wonderful study that journalism.org did a few years ago where they said the percentage of Americans who have listened to a podcast in the past month has almost doubled since 2008 from 9% to 17%. And this is from their uh, fact sheet from 2015. And I found this really interesting. Podcasting is something that people are actively engaging in, people are actively listening to, but it hasn't reached full market saturation yet. So we're, it's a means for us to easily reach an audience of our best buyers, but it's not something that's completely dominated. It's not like Google AdWords where we're competing against hundreds of other people. It's an easier medium for us to engage with. Third, there's this concept of influencer endorsement. And well, let's take a second to talk about what exactly that means. Uh, uh, Technorati Media published a, digi a digital influencer report a few years ago where they said, with regard to overall sources for information on the internet, blogs and influencers rank among the top five most trustworthy sources. And what this really means is, when it comes time for us to make a purchasing decision, we're going to talk to friends, we're going to talk to family, we're going to search around online, but we're also going to look to the podcasts we listen to, the blogs that we read, these influencers who are sharing information. If somebody gets up on stage and says, hey, here's a great resource, it's gonna help you, you know, automate your Twitter or uh, uh, use Buffer for this, we're gonna say, wow, I trust this person, I believe in what they're saying, great, I'll go ahead and use it. There's also a wonderful quote from a book, Pitch Anything by Oren Clough, where he says, the first impression we make on another person is based on that person's calculation of our social value. Again, influencer recommendation. If somebody's an influencer, if somebody has built up an audience, if somebody is an authority, when they say, hey, you should go check out this thing, we're more likely to go check out this thing. So when we put all these concepts together and start thinking about podcasts, we come up with what Oren Clough calls star power. Star power is the authority you've built up as a podcast host. If you host a podcast, if you've built up an audience, it means, well, that audience trusts you. When you say, hey, you should go check out that thing, that audience is more likely to go check out that thing. But this isn't a talk about starting a podcast. This is a talk about podcast tours and guesting on podcasts. What's wonderful about Star Power is it's transferable. When you appear as a guest on a podcast, you inherit some of that star power from the host. Just like I'm up on stage here talking to you. In the hallway, you might not know me from Adam, but because I'm placed in this position in front of you, you're like, oh, Kai's saying something interesting. I'm gonna take notes. Maybe this will be relevant for my business. The exact same concept applies when we think about podcasting. When you appear as a podcast guest, you inherit some of that star power. So I think about it this way. When it comes to podcasting, the guest is actually the star of the show. So when we put it all together, we could see three key concepts. If we focus on an audience of best buyers, it'll be easier for us to sell our products. 
when we look at the growth of podcasts, we can see that it's rapidly increasing, it's nowhere near market saturation, and it's an easy way for us to reach an audience of people we want to reach, our target market, our best buyers. Third, the star power we inherit, we accept from the host when we appear as a guest, allows us to make an endorsement or a recommendation for a product, which is easier for somebody to act on. It's not saying, hey, you should go check out that thing. It's saying, well, hey, this person who runs this podcast has invited me on. I'm recommending this service. I'm recommending this solution. And that star power, well, that moves you forward. So when we put this all together, we come up with the concept of podcast tours. And what I love about podcast tours is they let you reach existing audiences. If you start your own podcast, you need to build your own audience up from scratch. But if you go on a podcast tour, you identify 10 podcasts and appear as a guest, you're able to leverage those audiences. You don't have to build those audiences up yourself. Similarly, podcasts let you make direct personal contact with the people you're trying to reach. And this is really, really impactful. Chet Holmes from Ultimate Sales Machine says the most impactful marketing you could do is direct personal contact with the buyer. And with podcasting, it feels like a one-to-one -one relationship with the people listening to the podcast. You're in their ears for 30, 45, or 60 minutes. You're talking essentially directly to them for the duration of that podcast. Third, the most powerful thing about podcast tours is it lets you build your audience. I had a conversation with my colleague Ryan Wagner a couple weeks ago, and he said this wonderful quote, and I asked him for permission to print it, and he said the, sus the subscribers he gets from podcast guesting are by far the most engaged subscribers he has. 90% open rates, 70% click-through rates. These are astounding statistics. My list is pretty good and I get maybe a 60% open rate. I would kill for a 90% open rate. So when we think about podcast tours, there's two main concepts we want to keep in mind. First, we want to identify podcasts our target market listens to. If we're trying to reach waste management companies, well, we'll want to go on podcasts that reach waste management companies. Second, we want to pitch topics that our audience cares about. We want to teach them something new. So when it comes to identifying podcasts, how exactly can we do it? There's a few different ways I want to work, walk through for you today. The first is you could search in iTunes. And if you used iTunes, you know it's kind of pretty crappy. But iTunes happens to have a really nifty web view for all of their podcasts. And you could dive as deep as saying, show me all the popular management and marketing podcasts that are out there. I want to learn more about those. And you could get a direct list of every single popular podcast. The second great place to look, marketplaces and directories. There's a wonderful site that I love, cast.market. It's actually a uh, marketplace for advertisers to connect with podcast hosts and you know do the advertising and uh, podcast host song and dance. But it's an amazing tool for you to go on there and search and say, I want to find a list of all marketing podcasts. Or I want to find a list of all marketing podcasts that accept guests. With a quick little search, you could find exactly that and build up a list of podcasts to reach out to. Third, I recommend stalking your colleagues. If there's somebody in your network that you know uh, reaches the same audience as you, follow them around online and see what podcasts they appear on. So my colleague is, my colleague is in the audience, Kurt Elster. He reaches an audience of Shopify uh, customers and he's an e-commerce consultant. And I wanted to see, well, if I do a quick little Google search, can I find podcasts that he's appeared on? And uh, this is in the download you'll have at the end of the talk. No need to copy it down. But when I ran this quick little Google search, of the top 10 results, seven of them, unique podcasts that Kurt had appeared on. So if I'm trying to reach an audience of e-commerce consultants, I'm able to plug Kurt in and see, wow, here are seven podcasts that he's been on. Here are seven podcasts that accept guests. Here are seven podcasts that I could appear on. So if we, can, if we extend this out, we could say, well, that Kurt is just one example. If we could find five, 10, or 20 colleagues or competitors in the industry and use the same tactic, suddenly we're able to build a list of exactly the people we want to reach, podcasts that we've pre-validated. We know that they accept guests. We know that they reach our target market. They're exactly the podcasts we want to appear on. But once we've built that list, there's the question of pitching the podcast. What exactly are we supposed to say? How, what topics are we supposed to pitch? How do we make it interesting or relevant for the person we're speaking to? What I recommend is pitching three types of topics. When you're trying to get on a podcast, you either want to teach their audience something new, you want to teach them how to solve a small problem, or you want to share an unconventional opinion or something new. And in terms of a script, there's one that I absolutely love using and want to share with you. And I basically break it down like this. Hey, Name, I'm a big fan of podcast, Nate, and I loved your recent episode where you talked about topic. I want to teach your audience about this type of outcome. I'd love to help your audience learn any of the following topics. Topic one, and I describe the topic. 
topic two, topic three. Do, does any one of these sound like one your audience would be interested in learning more about? If so, just hit reply and let me know, and we'll move forward from there. I love this podcast outreach email because it takes the hard work off of a podcast host. Instead of emailing them and saying, hey, I'd love to be on your podcast, and it stops there, you do the hard work for them. You say, hey, I'm qualified. I know what I, talk about. I, what I could talk about. I know what I could teach your audience, and I'd love to teach your audience one of these three topics, which will help improve their lives. Will this be helpful for you? Just hit reply. Send me back a one-word email that says yes. Send me back one number. Say, topic number one sounds great. And it makes it so much easier for the podcast host to respond and engage with you. So another colleague of mine is in the audience, Eric Davis, and he had a wonderful quote for me. He uh, started doing this outreach process a few weeks ago, and he said he's pitched seven sites and had a 100% response rate with a 57% placement rate. And on top of that, he's now reaching an, or he's now being paid to reach for large sites that reach his dream buyers. So this outreach process is a really effective way to identify your target market, pitch them, and then get placements. Be it a placement on a podcast or a placement for a guest article, it really breaks down to understanding your target market, understanding what you could teach them, and then initiating that conversation, reaching out, saying, hey, this is what I could teach you. Would this be valuable to your audience? If so, just let me know. I've actually written a book about this entire process. It's hard for me to cram a 30,000 word book into a 12 minute talk, so these are just the top of the line, high level points that I wanted to share with you. But since you're a MicroConf attendee, there's a 50% discount on the entire book, the complete package, 12 expert interviews, th uh, 25 plus email templates. And uh, I've also put the slides and scripts and bonuses up for you to download, all available at podcastoutreach.com. Thank you so much for having me.